Hey, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Grief Drums, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at claymores and more specifically, how you can get more from them in game. So just lately, I've seen a lot of people using claymores and to be completely honest, they're not getting the most from them. So today I kind of wanted to cover that. I wanted to go over claymores themselves and figure out exactly where people are going wrong and what they're doing right so that we can all as a collective start using them a lot more effectively. So we're going to start off by looking at this first. We are outside in quite a bright area. And as you will see when I put this down, the lasers are really difficult to spot. Um, if you are inside of the building and you're looking at potentially running out, it's going to be a lot harder to see these because of the area they're in. If they were placed in a shadowed area, they're going to be a lot more visible and a lot easier as a defender to spot. So when you're an attacker, putting these down in a brighter area of the map where possible can definitely be handy. Now, I do appreciate that isn't always possible. Sometimes you need to cover a door and for whatever reason, there's a shadow there. You just kind of have to deal with it. But we're going to take a look at this door here first because this is a common run out. If you're playing a thermite, you want to try and uh, push over to the main wall. And although this door is one specific example, you can utilize this knowledge on several areas of the map and several doors um, across different maps as well. But when you come in up and you're trying to get this wall open, you're constantly worried about this run out just here. It's always in the back of your mind as to whether someone's going to be peeking you. Even if you've got a claymore down, if it's not your own claymore, I know for a fact that I'm constantly worried about it. So what you do see is you see a lot of people coming over to the door. They'll just slap a claymore down like this and think that that's good. They think they've got it covered. But as you can see, as a defender, you can quite easily see that claymore. The lasers themselves are reasonably hidden, but I can come all the way out to here without triggering that claymore and shoot it out. So with that in mind, we're going to take a look at moving the claymore back and more in line with this actual wall. Now, if you stand just slightly far back from it, you don't actually get pulled in the animation to the right at all. And you can see that this laser is so much closer to the wall itself and it's pretty much perfect. I mean, it's not quite there, but it's as good as it can be. Uh, you don't have to worry about the left hand laser, but by placing this down, you really do narrow the angle down. And on top of that, the claymore is a lot harder to actually get to as a defender. You have to come all the way out to about here. And by now you've probably actually triggered the laser itself. You've blown up, you've died. And even if you haven't, you are so far out of the doorway, you are ridiculously exposed to any attackers that are out on the main wall. Taking the time to actually pick up your claymore, test and adjust and make sure that it is going down in the exact perfect area to make it as difficult as possible for defenders can really be beneficial to you as a player and it can make sure that you are not going to get run out on. You can obviously do it on the opposite side of the door, um, but just taking the time to actually pick it up, put it down and making sure that the laser is as close as you can possibly get it, it really does make a difference. Now you will have seen there that I had to pick up and adjust it once or twice, um, but how long does that take? 10, 15 seconds? And just look at the difference that it makes. This right here is another example of a run out that is extremely common that the claymores just don't go down correctly. And as a result, you end up dying. Now, how often have you tried to push these windows just up here and you get a friend or a teammate to slap down a claymore on this door at the bottom of the yellow stairs only to die about five seconds into you being on that window? And you, you say to your team, I thought there was a claymore there. And they say, yeah, there was. I definitely put one down there. But they've just come over here and just thrown it down willy nilly just slapped it down and expected it to actually do something. That claymore right there is doing nothing. It is not going to achieve anything. At most, it is going to slow a defender down fractionally. But as you'll see, I'm not triggering this claymore, or at least I wouldn't be if I was a defender. I'm nowhere near the laser. I can easily see where the claymore is. And I'm just going to shoot it, rotate it out, and just destroy anyone that is repelling on those windows. As an attacker, by taking the time to actually move further back, Place the claymore down at a slight angle so that the laser is as close to that wall as you can possibly get it. You're going to make it an absolute nightmare for the defenders to get out here. And as you'll see, I've picked this up, what, three times now. That's the third time I've put it down. It's taken 15 seconds tops. And this is so much more accurate. It's going to be so much better and so much harder for the defenders to actually do anything about this unless they've got impact grenades. But even still, the impact grenade has to be close enough. And with the steps there, it might not even get taken out. So it's all about just trying to waste as much time with the defenders as possible. You've got them in a pretty open area. They're trying to get out. And quite frankly, they're just not on the site. Take the time, put your claymores as far back as you can so that the lasers are still covering the door frame and make sure that your laser is as close to that wall as you could possibly get it. 
So now that we've discussed the best way to use these claymores as an attacker, I want to go ahead and explain some of the ways to counter them as a defender. Now, obviously, impact grenades are extremely beneficial, but if you are mozzy and you happen to have a drone, did you know that you could drive it right in front of the claymore and pretty much nullify that claymore itself? It doesn't work because the drone blocks the lasers. Now, I do appreciate you need to be playing as Mozzie. You need to have caught a drone and that drone needs to be reasonably close for you. On top of that, you're also going to lose it if the Claymore is outside. But this could be a pretty good trade off. And in the right situation, if you are, you know, ready and you're the, you know, the last one and you, for whatever reason, want to try this, it can be extremely beneficial for getting around those Claymores and for stopping the lasers from actually hitting you. Now, what you'll see in the background is I'm showcasing a few different examples of this to hopefully get your creative juices flowing. If it happens to be through a drone hole and you're struggling to get past a certain area, this may be handy for you if you happen to be playing as this operator. Now, there are other alternatives. Ella is another perfect example. By throwing the Grismont mine down, you can go ahead and block the lasers with this and it will give you a really good area to move around in in front of that claymore. Now, as you can see here, I can pretty much see the entirety of all of that. I haven't shut the claymore out, so they're not going to hear the sound of that exploding. They're not going to know what's going on. And look how much space I've got to play with as a defender to be able to peek onto that main wall. Again, this does kind of rely on you having that utility there and at the time. Um, sometimes as LRI will retain one of these just in case I need it. And this is a perfect example of when I would be able to utilize it. Just for a very quick close up here, just to showcase it really clearly. Um, you go ahead and throw it in front of it and you can block. Well, here I block two lasers, which is pretty handy. And I'm really not sure why during this test that it wasn't being set off because thermite is literally right next to it. So I don't know if the claymore seems to be blocking it or something along those lines. But as you can see, the laser is blocked. The last operator I want to showcase this with is lesion, although you do have to rest one on top of another in order to get it high enough. This does make it a lot less viable for this operator because this can be a bit of a balancing act, if you will. Can't believe I just said that. But you get my point. Now we're going to head on over to coastline. Um, I'm just going to showcase this. Both of these windows are potential jump out spots, certainly if you're repelling on them. So by placing a claymore down sideways underneath them, you can actually cover both of these. You can stop potential rotates between the two. If you are doing this, you don't want the claymore facing in to minimize the lasers as we were previously, because there's the potential that they could miss it entirely. So instead, what you want to do is face it out from the window slightly just to give you the maximum radius and cover the largest surface area for the potential jump outs. Now, while we're here by the blue bar, what I want to do is I want to showcase this very quickly. This is a really good spot that's very well known, but is surprisingly good at catching people out. Certainly, if you've got the intel that someone is sort of playing here and trying to stay in blue sunrise, this drone hole down here is really good at just sort of locking them in. If they're not paying attention, they're busy trying to shoot the window, just placing a claymore down on the other side of it is as simple as that. You will be amazed at how many people you can actually take out if you are attacking this site. Now, I do appreciate that not all ranks will play this site. It does get played a little bit more when people are five stacking because it can be really, really strong, but only if you have a full team. Nevertheless, I'm getting away from the point. The drone hole is actually really beneficial because it limits people's movement. And if they're not listening out for it and they don't hear it go down, you'll be surprised at how many people you get. Drone holes can be extremely beneficial, and I'll show you why. If you go ahead and place it up next to this drone hole, the lasers obviously go right the way through. And if I go ahead and open this wall as if it was uh, in the middle of a game, obviously I wouldn't open the middle one, I'd probably open this over here. But as you'll see here, the lasers have gone all the way through. Now, the one bonus to that is very often teams, if the wall goes open and there is a bit left on this side, they will push over and aggressively hold the bottom of the yellow stairs. This can become a bit of a nuisance for them. They have to try and deal with it, exposing them to the main wall. Or alternatively, they pop up here and they can't really move anywhere. They can try and get out, but it's it just limits the movement in this area. The other option to this is any roamers coming back trying to assist. You know, say, for example, the plant has gone down and you've pushed into the behind the white van. It's a, a 1v whatever clutch situation. They come running down the stairs, vault over trying to deal with you and boom, they're in the claymore again. Another really nice technique is if you have a nomad on the team, what you can do is you can partner up with her get her to place a nomad air jab down there and place your claymore off way out of the way 
so that the lasers can't be seen and it's really difficult to see. And as you'll see from the clip in the background, it's just great fun for memeing on people. Now, this kind of partnering up does sort of uh, allow for a bit of creativity. As you'll see, this clip in the background was actually taken from an older video back when Nomad had her own claymores. But the principle itself still works. If you are partnering up and you are duo stacking with someone else, by placing a claimer on the other side of a wall and partnering up with Nomad, you can quite literally throw air jabs down in the middle of a corridor. And then as soon as they go past it, they get flung through the wall and into this claymore that just happens to be well out of view, never gonna be seen on the opposite side of a wall. Extremely cheeky, mega fun. So the final tip I wanna showcase today for claymores is gonna be this. This is a single laser poking through a bullet hole in the wall. Now, this particular spot, it probably isn't gonna be the best, but it's more to showcase the actual uh, way of using it. Now, as you'll see, the claymore has been put down. A couple of little bullet holes have been shot to allow one laser to poke through. And if people are trying to move down this corridor and they're ADSing, they're not paying attention to what is around them, it can be really good for just catching them out. This is one that you can get really creative on and find strange spots all over the map. Or alternatively, use Maverick on hard walls and the walls that you're trying to actually get through that Bandit might be tricking. There are so many different ways to utilize this sort of a technique. Now, obviously, I'm just using bullet holes. I'm just doing a couple of little bullet holes and allowing the laser to penetrate through, making it just as hidden as it possibly can be. Just try and get creative. Try and figure out some really insane plays that people may potentially go to and just try and see if you can get away with this. Now, I appreciate nine times out of ten, you're not going to be utilizing claymores in this way. I totally get that. I really do. You're going to put it on the common runouts. But I figured I'd show you this just in case because you never know when the opportunity is going to present itself to just try something like this out. And you never know. You may find the perfect spot. If you do, let me know it down in the comments below. I'm afraid that's going to be it for today's video. I have waffled on for a lot longer than I expected to. I really have. And you know what? There is still a hell of a lot more to cover with Claymores. I cannot believe just how long this video has taken compared to how much more I genuinely have to talk about these. So if you are interested in more about Claymores, um, let me know down in the comments below and I'll potentially look at putting another video together, elaborating on a few other different points. For example, how to counter Oryx with them or how Clash interacts with them. If you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting that thumbs up. If you don't already, make sure to subscribe. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, stay reckless and relentless.